Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is a condensed version of today's episode of Undisputed, handpicked with the best segments and discussions. Skip, Shannon, let's go. Aaron Rodgers had a game for the ages last night. He went down in the second quarter with a left knee injury and had to be carted off the field, but he came back in the third quarter with his Packers down by 20. Rodgers then put on an offensive display with three fourth quarter touchdown passes, including a 75-yard game winner to Randall Cobb with just over two minutes left. Let's take a listen to Rodgers after the game. Playing behind Brett Favre um, for three years, you realize um, you got to be tough to play this position. So... You got a in that situation. It's about coming back out and leading, and and if you can do it, and deal with the pain, you should be out there. I felt like once I got out, back out there, and the adrenaline was going, that uh, it loosened up a little bit. But then you know tightened up there in the fourth quarter. I was walking up and down the sideline to try and keep it loose. But uh, no, we'll do tests tomorrow and uh, give you a better answer on Wednesday when I when I talk. But. Uh, As long as there's no major issues and I'll keep playing. Hall of Famer Rod Woodson Mm. is here. Thanks for joining us this Monday. Thanks for having me. Start with you, Rod. How impressive was Aaron Rodgers? Well, I mean, I was already impressed going back to 2016 season. Remember the division round? I'm sorry, Skip. When the Green Bay Packers played the Dallas Cowboys yeah. and Jared Cook was running a, a speedo to the right. from the right side to right. the left, and he was he was rotating to his left side and then threw it to the left sideline with his right arm. Only one quarterback in the league can throw that. I was impressed with that. Okay. But then was, you come back. Rod, he was and just you, standing on the sidelines. Nobody was within <laughs> five oh, yards. Oh, of it him. was several guys there. The sideline was there. The sideline's undefeated. Yeah. They were <laughs> the National Football League. The sideline's undefeated. No, but they're playing prevent. Stop go ahead. Just go ahead. Go ahead. But then go anyway, ahead. then anyway. I can't help myself. I know, he, you know, he's a star fan. I got it. But th- then you go, you, you think about what he did last night. You know, and he had every reason not to come back out. Mm-hmm. And one big reason was 52, Khalil <laughs> Mack. Yeah. I mean, he was giving him heck and havoc in the first half. And then he, the one thing I love about great players, Shannon, mm-hmm. great players can overcome bad obstacles. And they can play with it outside of their comfort zone. Mm-hmm. That's the key. You're going to get hurt. You're going to get dinged up. This guy came in, dinged up, hurt, couldn't throw, couldn't plant on his front leg. So he was throwing off his back foot the whole night. And in the fourth quarter, he's throwing mm. dimes. Dimes. Mm. Just dimes. Like Kevin Love Point dropping, guard. Dimes, dropping dimes. Mm. So, I mean, it's, you know, to me, he solidified what I already thought and I already mm-hmm. knew, that this is the best quarterback in the National Football League. Really? Better than Tom Brady, says Rod. Did Richard. he just say it? Yes. Hall of Fame, wow. a gold jacket. Oh, Hall of player. Fame, a gold jacket. I'll take Brady every Sunday, and I'll beat you every Sunday with Tom and, Brady, but go ahead. So you got two Hall of Famers <laughs> and a blue jacket. Are oh, you so said the same thing? Yeah. There we go. That's what, I'm talking he, about. That's what I'm talking about. Blue jacket. Yeah, you got on blue. Oh, you mean I'm a blue jacket. I thought you had some weird blue jacket. <laughs> no, you got a blue jacket. I'm, 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 in, I'm in my own hall of fame. <laughs> oh, okay. Mm. I mean, he had to be perfect. And he had to be perfect when he wasn't at his absolute best. Because now they took him and they made him says, no, you will not have mobility. Mm. You will not be able to cre- create plays outside of the pocket. You must stand in this phone booth and throw the ball from here. Mm. And he did that. There are very few guys that if you take away one of the things that makes them great mm. and you take that away from him and say, beat me, which is like a pitcher. Mm. If he's a fast, make a roll to Chapman beat you with something other than that 104-mile-an-hour fastball. Mm. That's what they, that's, and that's what they did. They took that away. They took his legs. Because what separates him, Skip, is his ability to throw the ball accurately off either foot outside of the pocket. Mm-hmm. He can do that better than anybody. He can make throws that only he can make. Mm. But every other quarterback in the league, he can make their throws. But they can't make his throws. Mm. Skip, he had to be great. There was no reason for the Packers to win this game mm. other than Aaron Rodgers' excellence. Mm. And you keep talking about, well, run after the catch. Well, that's how most quarterbacks make their living. They're not throwing bombs. They're mm. Tom Brady. He's dumping it to the back. He's dumping it to Gronk or Edelman or whomever, and they're getting yards after the catch. I don't know. Ryan Fitzpatrick made his living throwing bombs. Oh, yeah, but, but you did but <laughs> One day. <laughs> yeah, One that, day. That, 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 <laughs> that, that yeah. normally, okay. normally happens like yeah. that. It's just you, like, how far can I throw this and who's going to run under it, right? <laughs> Ryan Fitzpatrick and Aaron Rodgers' name don't even go together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Skip, it, it's, and, and, I, and I told and Rod, you know this. I played with John Elway, and I knew if we were close to you in the fourth quarter, no matter how bad we played up until that point, Skip, just get him to the fourth quarter with a chance. That's all we needed. We mm. down 10. Oh, we got you. You should have put us away in the first half. Mm. You didn't. Oh, Sam's going to bring us back. And that's what they got with that guy number 12. <sighs> so, 
I say enough of this over-the-top myth-making about this legendary performance from one Aaron Rodgers because I wasn't all that impressed because of the competition and what happened to the competition in the second half. In the first half, Mitchell Trubisky played the half of his life. I couldn't even recognize him because I've never seen him play like that at Carolina or last year with the Bears. I don't love him. I don't think they're going to love him long term. But he had a night to remember in the first half. Then Shannon Sharp, what happened in the second half? He didn't play particularly well. They got to him. He threw for a grand total of 62 yards and put a grand total of six points. I think they got conservative, Skip. Okay. All right. That happens on the road at Lambeau, arch rival. And I'm sure they were shell-shocked by the return of one Aaron Rodgers. But Khalil Mack had a half for the ages in the first half. He terrorized Brian Balaga. He was all over first Aaron Rodgers, then Deshaun Kaiser. And what happened in the second half? Nothing happened. He disappeared because he ran out of gas. gas. But he ran out of gas because the Green Bay Packers had a game plan, and their game plan was to change it. They went to the speed package on the offensive side, and that takes away away the pass rush. They were speeding up the tempo. Mm -hmm. But Brian Balaga mostly took him single coverage, and he kicked his behind in the second half. And that was what was most impressive to me because he got embarrassed in the first half by a guy that we all consider the best pass rusher in football. You know him pretty well. But here's the thing. I tell you what. Wait till they go to Chicago, Mm -hmm. and and, and Khalil has his football legs. I know. know. He doesn't. That's the key. Okay. He, he doesn't have his football legs, and he's going to get – he was blown after the, inter, the, the, after, the yeah, big he six. Was he, was, he was done. Yeah. But then when, when, when they went to the speed package, and you, you're trying, to, you're trying to, to keep those legs and that energy that you had in the first quarter, you're just not going to have it. I so thought he was going to be limited. Games, he he played be 70% of the snaps. They, they he played won. 42 snaps. That's a lot of football. Money. They, they, they wanted him to be limited. Okay, but when you get it. a strip sack and a pick six, well, get <laughs> back out there and see if you can get another one. <laughs> so guess what? In the second half, the Chicago Bears had zero sacks and zero quarterback pressures. Zero and zero. That means Aaron Rodgers got to stand back there and say – Devontae or Randall or Geronimo. I'll try Geronimo. He had nothing but time. You know it, and I know it, because I don't know where the Bears went. They they quit tackling. They quit pressuring at all. And I got to go to the last play. I'm I'm just going to mention it one more time. But on the play before the last play, Aaron made one bad decision, although his receiver got tangled and fell down. But he threw it right to Kyle Fuller, who's the best defensive back on the field for either team. Mm -hmm. And he hit him in the stomach with the football. Mm -hmm. You just have to catch it. He's had a little trouble catching the football in his career so far, four four years he's played. He was the 14th overall pick. If you're the 14th overall, you're a pretty high pick, right? Don't you but that's catch why he played DB. Okay. Yeah, if he can you catch play DB, wide receiver. If, yeah, we can catch him yeah. at wide receiver. Okay. All right. Most DBs can't catch. Okay, but, <laughs> but you, can, you can catch. I play both ways. Okay. Going throughout, throughout. Okay. Yeah. High school, right. through college, I play both ways. Okay. I knew I could catch. All right, but you have to catch it. And if you catch it, we're not having this conversation right now because the game is over. But it happens sometimes. You remember in the Super Bowl, Skip, the one that Joe Montana won? Mm-hmm. He hit Lewis Billups in the, in, in the chest. And he dropped it in the next play. Guess what? John Uh Taylor, 200 Jet X slant for the game winning touchdown. Well, and the luckiest play in the history of the Super Bowl game, the Eli, remember he threw it. Oh, Sante Samuel yeah, had it on the sideline. Right right. But that's, right. it always happens. If you ever watch football, you see that a, a defensive player can make a play, and as soon as he doesn't make a play, it comes back to haunt the defense right. okay. in so, a big way. And okay, so Rod Woodson, last night. explain this to me. The play of the game, it's third and ten from the 25. This is do or die. Obviously, you get one more snap, one more shot. But on this play, I don't know what the Bears call because it looked like cover six to me, and it looked like they had Eddie Jackson, the safety, come up and take Randall Cobb in the slot. And guess what? Guess where Khalil Mack went? Guess where he went on the play? He zone blitzed. He's he's backing off the line of scrimmage, as did the other defense. I had the exact same question, like, what was that defense? I've never seen a defense like that. I don't know if that was – it looked like he was a middle high safety. looked like it was cover three, middle high safety, and he comes – and, and some teams do, they will have this rule where if he runs a speedo or, or a crossing, the deep safety takes it and the, and the corner falls off. I'm not really sure, but I just, I just think that's fundamentally flawed and a lot of bad things can happen as is last night. Yeah, and I give Aaron credit because he waited and he, he sort of right. drifted a little bit to his left and then Randall Cobb because they got great chemistry and rapport because they've been together for a while. 
He stops and uncovers a little bit yeah. back, and Eddie Jackson overruns it and then loses his feet. He, he tried to get his hands on the ball. It's just bad idea on top of bad idea on top of bad idea, and nobody's home. Nobody's left, yeah. and he's off to the races. And guess who had the best chance of catching him? Khalil Mack because he's zone blitz. He's dropped back into coverage. If I know a quarterback is wounded, I'm going to heat him up. I'm going to make him move. I know he's not going anywhere. You play cover five, you play something where you can get some pressure on him. But you can't let him sit back there and just pat the ball because guys are going to play backyard football. They'll uncover on you. And I don't care who you have in your secondary. You let guys start running around, he runs over here, stop, slide back. That's what you're going to get. Okay. But if you think about Vic Fazio, the defense coordinator, who is a really good defense coordinator in the National Football League, it's just not his wheelhouse. He's not a blitzing type guy. He's a cover four. He's a quarters guy. Quarters guy. He, he stays in that wheelhouse. And, but when you're right, man, when you have a wounded dog in the backside of mm -hmm. that, you go after him. Okay. You go and get what that does guy. the great Shannon Sharp always tell me about injuries? If you can step onto that football field, yeah. no excuses, no. right? Mm -mm. So I don't want to hear he's playing on one leg because he said the doctors completely cleared him. Yeah. There was no chance, according to his doctor, that he could hurt it anymore. So it was either completely torn and he's got a ruptured ACL and played with it, or he's pretty good to go. Like, like they just they consider it maybe a, like a mild sprain, like but, a low-grade sprain. But here's the thing, Skip, but when you're out there, they, all they see is Aaron Rodgers. People forgot that he got his knee hurt and he got carted off. They don't care anything about that. They see the quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. Who, who most people watching on TV, but that's the, all they thought about. But the fans don't care. All they see is Rodgers, and you're supposed to deliver us. You, plus, you just got 134. You all, got, all I heard was he played on one leg. He did. That's all I hear about. But guess what, Skip? They say for 134 million, you're getting 80 million between now and St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> you better bring us home for oh, 80 million. All, I th all I'm thinking about is if he still is playing on one leg against the Vikings next weekend, and that would be no. fine oh. with I me. Guarantee, I guarantee you, they heat him up. What you want to bet, they'll heat him up. Zim will do that. <laughs> <laughs> will definitely heat him up. Uh, all right, well, the Vikings are my team, and Skip's team are the Cowboys. Hey, and yep. uh, are we already panicking? Nope, we're not. Should. No. no, we're not. No mercy. So Tom Brady is 41 years old and in his 19th season, but it doesn't look like he's slowing down at all. The Patriots beat the Texans yesterday 27-20 thanks to three Brady touchdown passes to three different receivers. New England has an AFC Championship game rematch in Jacksonville next week. Shannon, how impressive was Brady yesterday? I mean, he was good, but he wasn't the most – I mean, he wasn't more impressive than Aaron Rodgers or Ryan Fitzpatrick, who threw for four bills and four touchdowns. He wasn't as impressive as Mahomes, who threw for four touchdowns on the road. Skip, you would agree good. with that. I was more impressed with their defense and how they were able to make Deshaun Watson look very, very average yesterday, Skip. Now, if that defense is going to play like that all year, oh, they'll win the Super Bowl. There's no question in my mind. They were so you're thinking they won't? It's, it's Skip, it's hard, for, it's hard for me to believe that they're going to be able to keep this kind of consistency up. Mm. They were getting pressure, a lot of it, you know, um, with just three. But a lot of times, Deshaun was running out of the pocket. See, when there's a three-man rush, Skip, sometimes Deshaun gets happy feet. He mm -hmm. slides to the left, he slides to the right. Yep. But when you roll, uh, roll one way or the other, mm -hmm. you cut down half the field. That's why most of the really good quarterbacks, they like to stay in the pocket so the whole field is at their disposal. Mm. You run one side or the other, half the field is only at your disposal. Mm. Um, this is another reason, Skip, I do not like young guys sitting out, especially quarterbacks during the preseason, because Deshaun Watson, he had some guys open, mm -hmm. and he looked very, very average. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, on some throws, Skip, he looked terrible. Mm. And that's very disappointing, considering how well he played. Now, he's a, uh, he's a turnover guy, Skip. He turned it over a lot in college. And normally guys... He did that the last year. He had, a, he had a few in junior year, if you look back mm -hmm. at it, Skip. He, he, he makes some ill-advised throws. But Tom, Tom Brady's Tom Brady. He still has that monster. Like I said, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Rob Gronkowski is the most dominant non-quarterback in all of football. There is no answer. We've never seen anything like him. 6'6", mm -hmm. 270, that can run a huge catch radius. Mm -hmm. Tremendous run after the catch. He can bl in line block. You can it's put him in the Jalen Ramsey said. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. That's He's what Jay, Jalen's Jaylen maybe had, the best corner in football. Jalen had his hands full yesterday. Yeah. He had his hands maybe full. Maybe he's better against bigger, right? Yeah, he, is. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. is. He yeah. is. He is. He has problems with Antonio. Yeah. Antonio Brown will give him problems. Odell yeah. would give him problems. Mm -hmm. And they gave him problems. But, yeah, Brady was Brady, Skip. I'm not trying to diminish him. He threw three touchdowns on opening day. I expect this from Tom Brady. What I didn't expect was to see the defense play as well as they did. Because when you look at it, you're like, they didn't have Aaron Donald. They didn't get Khalil Mack. Mm -mm. They don't have an elite, you know, uh, 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 I guess Gilmore, uh, 
Yeah, yeah. Gilmore. Is, is good, but they I got Dante Hightower yeah, back. But Ke- yeah. he's not Keekly. No. He's not Bobby Wagner. He's not Sean Lee. We know that. See, there you, see I, I'm done. I don't even want to talk anymore. Mm-hmm. I think mean, that's ruined, all you got. You ruined every conversation with this Sean Lee. Stop it. Just have to bring a little truth to the conversation. You know Sean Lee is not on those two guys' level, especially mm-hmm. Keekly. So, a year ago on opening Thursday night, what happened to Tom Brady in that defense? He yeah, was he, awful, and it got torched by Alex Smith and the Kansas City Chiefs. He was awful okay. in the second half. He huh? played good the first half, Skip, because they were up. But remember, they, they were up. I, I just remember him being awful, because <laughs> by his standards, that was awful. And it was a wipeout. So, they were not going to let that happen again yesterday. Okay. And I'm with you. The defense is definitely better than it was a year ago. Mm-hmm. But so is that quarterback. This guy is unbelievable because he just keeps getting better. He's obviously more experienced, he's more knowledgeable, and he plays with even more supreme confidence than he used to two or three years ago. He's just serene in the pocket because he knows it before you know it. He, he knows what the defense is going to do before it does it. And by the way, he took a couple of big shots yesterday, one from J.J. Watt, and he jumps right back up. And you see the T-shirt he was wearing the other day? I think it was Friday's interview. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Pliability, right? Yeah. So I guess it works. I don't know. Whatever. I got to <laughs> knock on wood here just to make sure. But I just got to throw out one stat that I heard right. that just knocked me over because I, I, I couldn't even compute it because I didn't believe it. But do you realize that since 2007, the Patriots at home against AFC teams – are 57 and 2 that's Tom Brady at home. Mm-hmm. Tom Brady at home, mm-hmm. 57 and 2 against AFC teams in the regular season. Over right? 12 regular mm-hmm. seasons. Well, that that's impossibly that's great. That's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. That's, yeah. that's at home. So again, obviously they're playing an AFC team yesterday to get mm-hmm. to 57 and 2. And the other one that just knocked me over they had the stat on the telecast. Tom Brady has now scored in 68 straight second quarters. It's like a minutiae stat, but when you think about it, it's just hard to keep scoring in the second right. quarter, right? And he's done it 68 straight games. And what they try to do, Skip, what they are, what the Patriots try to do, and they're very good at it, that they usually defer to toss. So they try to get that score right in the second, right before mm-hmm. halftime, mm-hmm. and then they get the ball out and get another score. Mm-hmm. So if they were up seven, they now do. they're up 10 to 14. And by the way, Bill O'Brien defer- won and deferred to to Brady yesterday right. and got away with it yes. on the first because he because he knew yeah. what Tom what you know coach yeah. Belichick likes to do yeah. skip Tom Brady is Tom Brady with these these you know I, they're like Brady and Rodgers okay I, I believe those are the two best mm-hmm. they can take yours and beat you yeah. and they they're definitely going to take theirs and mm-hmm. beat you there are very few guys that can do that. So I'm not, you know, when Brady does what he does to Rodgers, not mm-hmm. Rodgers' circumstances last night, but if Rodgers had been healthy mm-hmm. and did that, I was like, oh, yeah, okay, I expect him to do mm-hmm. that. It's like Tom Brady. If Tom Brady, get, you know, gets injured mm-hmm. on his you know, leg or something like that and he does it outside of his comfort zone, mm-hmm. he would have to get outside of his comfort zone. But Tom How is about Tom. 12 stitches in your throwing hand? I don't know. That's kind of outside your comfort zone no, for a not. quarterback. No. I don't know. No, leg. Where Aaron Rodgers would be walking around the whole game no. saying. No. No, no. Why you do that? That's why not you, fair. Why you like do that? that? Yeah. <laughs> why you do that, Skip? Got, remember when he had his calf? He's limping to the huddle. And he, and he beat you know your cowboy. Reminds me of, he, he reminds me of Emmitt Smith, who I covered for years with the Cowboys. Great player, obviously. Most yards ever run by a running back, okay. right? Most rushing touchdowns, yep. You know what I nicknamed him? Emmy Smith, because he won an Emmy going back to the hole just about every time. He was hurt. Some, yeah, he was really hurt. All those carries, Skip. Yeah. How you think you become the <laughs> all-time leader? He was the classic Richard? one. He would just drag himself back to the huddle, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, here he goes again. Eight more yards, ten more yards, twelve more yards. But will you concur yeah. that you were more impressed with the defense than you were with Tom Brady? Yesterday? No, I thought Brady was outstanding. He had a QBR of 84, and he did miss a couple throws, but he made some big-time throws. But hold on. This is the defense mm-hmm. – that gave up 41 in the Super Bowl. Well, it's better than that. Okay, then. Yeah. Well, well, Tom Brady wasn't as good as he was in the Super Bowl with three That's touchdowns and 505. Good. Pretty good. Skip, he threw for less than 300. Mm-hmm. Come on now. But he was pretty good. So was he Super Bowl See, good? I, I'm just dealing with the fall off the cliff theory that I keep hearing from across the table that, that you never know. Past age 40, you, you don't. fall off the cliff. You, you just don't. fall off the cliff. And you it's going to happen overnight. He's going to fall you, off no, the cliff. You live day to day. You know what? On Saturday night, Tom Brady did not fall off the cliff. That's all I can take away from yesterday. 
He looked just as good as he did. Oh, did he, let me ask you a question. He did, did he look as good as Ryan Fitzpatrick? Did he look as good as Patrick Mahomes? In his no. own way. Stop. He just controlled the game from start to finish. He looked QBR as good. of 84 to Deshaun's 18. I'm trying, what I'm trying to Ooh. figure out is how does Aaron Rodgers have a 130 QB uh, rating? Mm-hmm. Tom Brady has a 102, mm-hmm. but Tom Brady's QBR is higher than his. Mm. He had more incompletions. Because QBR is a much more complete stat than the passer rating. But I'm trying to figure out, let's see. He had a better completion percentage. He Down threw more yards. Distance. Yeah. And he had a longer touchdown. I, I'm just trying to – something's not adding up for me, Skip. Uh, Aaron Rodgers played a quarter and another part of a quarter, and he was pretty awful. But, Skip – Right? That if, counted. That's if, what dragged it down. But here's the thing. If I get one F and I get ten A's, I shouldn't get a D. Usually I think QBR is harder on Brady than anybody. You need to stop. I I'm serious. 84. So, you pick the, not San Diego, but L.A. Chargers to dethrone the I New did. England Patriots. So, they got off to a rough start because they gave up 38, but that's a high-powered offense. It mm-hmm. is spectacular. Yeah, when, it hits, when it hits on all cylinders with that kid flinging it, yeah. they can score. So, I'm going to give you one week. It's early in the season. No, I'm not jumping off. No. Okay. But are, do you still believe they could go to Foxborough and win the AFC Championship game? Maybe they'll come around by the end of the year. Well, somebody might I just knock, can't Somebody see might it. knock them off and they don't have to go to Foxborough. Yeah. Well, where? How? What they're they're, they're going to have home field. First of all, they're just going to have home so field. You, have they ever been beaten in Foxborough in you know, the playoffs? By Baltimore. Okay. okay. But that's a special group of men. Do you see Baltimore, how did he look yesterday? Yeah. Do you think they're going to go beat them? They might skip. It's one week, and we're already talking about AFC Championship. That was Joe Fluco against Nathan Peterman. And you know Joe Fluco stands mm-hmm. tall against Tom mm-hmm. Brady. Mm-hmm. Plays him tough he every does. time. No, he does. I give you that. But I don't know if they still – is Ray Lewis, is he going to come back for that game? Maybe. No. I don't no, know. He, he's not coming back. <laughs> but Brady, Brady, was, Brady was Brady. Mm-hmm. I expect this of Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. I did not expect to see that defense. Mm-hmm. You didn't expect to see that defense. No, Not after I, the, I've been seeing it in the preseason. It's pretty good. After it's you, better. After you said Coach Belichick sabotaged. Well, he or did. he sabotaged ye yep. in the Super Bowl. Mm, he got now sabotaged they, ye. <laughs> And yeah. now he, put, he, did, he did what he did to Deshaun Watson in that offense with all those playmakers. Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden you're like, nah, it was okay. Mm-hmm. No, I told you they're better. It's the first thing I said. They're definitely going to be better because they got their middle linebacker back. That helps, right? Okay, what about yeah. the, the, the pass rushes? Huh? I didn't see no Aaron Donald. Adrian Claiborne, boy, he terrorized Dak Prescott last year. That, against Chaz Green. Yeah, okay. Well, he's there. Skip, he had six sacks in, six sacks in one game, and yep. he finished the season with eight. Yep. So what, what about the other 15, Skip? He got two sacks in 15 games. New England's defense will be just above average, but it'll be good enough to win the Super Bowl. They'll That's be very good in scoring defense. Yeah. Okay. That's what matters. Yeah. Yards don't win your game. Points win games. No mercy. Well, the Cowboys offense looked pretty bad yesterday in a 16-8 loss to the Panthers. So well, Rod Woods amended it to pretty bad. You started I was, so saying it looked awful. So thank you for that. Pretty Appreciate bad. That. I got to yeah. keep you somewhat okay, happy. Yeah, I, know. I don't know. It's hard to Thank sometimes. you, Jenny. Pretty no, bad, but awful. <laughs> Rod Woodson's still here. So I will start with you, Rod. Was yesterday more about the Panthers being good or the Cowboys being pretty bad? I think it's about the Cowboys' offense being pretty bad. Okay. Just for the fact, think about this. Thompson, Williams, Swam, Beasley, that's their starting receiving core. Mm-hmm. All right? One of the best tight ends ever played in the National Football League. He retired. So when you're a defense coordinator, you're looking at it going, okay, I got all these guys. I'm trying to figure out who they are. And then there's a guy in the backfield, Ezekiel Elliott. He's like the mainstay. Mm-hmm. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go eight in the box, nine in the box, man to man, and the receiver's got to get open. And then Prescott has to deliver. These guys got to get open, but then Prescott has to deliver on a consistent basis. Who's going to do that more? Can we, can we stop Zeke? If we stop Zeke, then it's all the pressure goes to Prescott. And we believe that we can be a better football team and be better than your offense if we do that on a consistent basis. Simple as this. When a deep, ask any defensive coordinator, when they face the Cowboys, who and what are you trying to stop? We're trying to stop Zeke Elliott and that run game. No defensive coordinator goes into the game, says, we're trying to stop Dak Prescott. When you face Tom Brady, you face Aaron Rodgers, you mm-hmm. face Cam Newton, when you face these other top quarterbacks, they say, we got to get the head of the snake. That's the quarterback. Mm-hmm. When you face the Dallas Cowboys, the head of the snake is one Ezekiel Elliott. Mm-hmm. And if you stop him, you beat the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. You make Dak Prescott beat you. And guess what? Who's Pre- the offensive rookie of the year? 
when those two were rookies? I'm just trying to remember. Dak Prescott. Oh, thank you. Go ahead. And what did Zeke do? <laughs> what did Zeke do? I don't remember. <laughs> Led the league in rushing. Yeah. 1,606 yeah. yards. Off 15 rushing touchdowns. Year. Averaging oh. five yards a carry yeah. on first down. Interesting. If you, if you don't mind me asking, yeah. since Zeke has not been that guy since mm-hmm. then, yeah. how does Dak look? Well, is Zeke that guy? Maybe that's the question. Oh! Oh, oh so now you're giving up on Zeke. Oh, now it's on Zeke. I noticed you don't ever want to play wow. any of the, You know what's getting wow. better. You know, I must say, after all I heard, and I didn't go to camp practice, but all I heard was he looked sleek and explosive in camp, right? He just taken over camp practice. He don't look sleek he, now. he didn't look sleek and explosive to me yesterday. I'm sorry. And again, he played zero preseason snaps, and maybe you got to knock some rust off, but the body didn't look as good as it looked when he came back from Cabo I'll after agree. his six-game suspension. <laughs> he didn't look like that guy. Yes. That was not explosive Zeke yesterday. But I'm going to say this one more time, and I'm going to stand by it. I still believe this is a wild card team because you're overreacting to what happened at Carolina when I watched Tom Brady at Carolina in the third preseason game, the dress rehearsal, and Tom Brady played start to finish in the first half. Cam played the whole first half. And what happened? Tom Brady could do next to nothing. He managed three points and barely 100 yards passing against this defense. This defense is stout, it is physical, and it plays fast, especially at home when it gets the crowd going behind it. And it's going to make a lot of offenses look pretty bad this year. Just watch. It'll make Drew Brees work for his points and yards. and It'll make Matt Ryan work. And when Eli goes there on October 7th, he's going to get terrorized because they can flat out bring it from everywhere. Now they've added Julius Peppers back in there. And speaking of older players who look young, he, he's just flying. He still looks like Julius Peppers to me. So again, I'm not going to overreact to to what they did to the Cowboy offense, yet Cam to the Cowboy defense, which by the way is still pretty good. It's it's good enough to be a wild card team. Cam did to my defense what I thought Dak might do to their defense, which is some zone reads, some some rollouts, some some more things where you get to have the ball in your hands and carry the ball. And instead, right away in what shaped up as a low-scoring, physical, defensive football game, what did they do? They go away from Zeke right away. You got to feed the beast. You got to get, get him some reps. And I don't care if he gets none yard gains. You, you got to keep pounding and pounding and get him because in the second half, he started to look a little more like Zeke. Mm-hmm. But what did they start doing? They started running read option. They got Dak involved in that. They started getting a little creative with some inside sweep handoffs, you know, off, uh, out of the shotgun that, that started to bother that Carolina front a little bit. But speaking of the Cowboy offensive line, they're starting this raw rookie set second round pick at left guard. He's he's opposite Kwan Short. He got annihilated yesterday. He got manhandled from start to finish. Kwan would blow up the run game and then he would shove the pocket right back in Dak's face and make him move and go somewhere. And after a while, to your point, if you're going to just play pure drop back and try to let one of those receivers beat somebody, you're going to have a long day because I thought it was going to be dink and dack. You make fun of him, but I thought it was going to be bing, 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 handoff, lots of handoffs, lots of read option, get Dak involved in the run game the way Cam's involved in the run game. Dak's 250 pounds. He's a big, strong man who can take the beating. So I, I didn't see any of that. I saw him dropping back and hold the football. If you drop back and hold it for two or three counts you against that front, sacks. you're going to have six like sacks. You you're going to get punished. It's going to look ugly, and it looked ugly all day because their their starting field position was just horrible in their first seven positions, uh, possessions. They'd started from the 18-yard line on average. They're, they're backed up against a hellacious defense, and they went away from Zeke early. And I have no idea why. I don't get it. But, Skip, I, but when you look at it, when you need to make a play, where is he going with the football? They're devoid of playmakers on the edges. They, every team has a guy that if it's third and eight and I need a throw and I need somebody to make a catch for me, everybody has that guy. Who is that guy on Dallas? He's, he's gone. Well, he was gone two years ago, effectively. <laughs> oh, Jason. Huh? No. No, you're, oh, you're, you're talking well, about you Des might, Bryant. We, yeah, well, Des, Des and Jason. Okay. All right. Both those guys. Okay. Well, you can't blame Dez. Dez gone. Dez said, stop blaming me. He told me to tell you to stop blaming him <laughs> okay. because he wasn't there. All right. So, in the big picture, it's still a football game. And, and it's 10 to nothing late in the third quarter. And they finally get some field position at the 45, and they move it into field goal range. So, they have a 47-yard field goal. Did Dan Bailey trot onto the field and just kick it right down the middle? between? Nope. He didn't because he got cut. I still don't have any idea how you could cut – a guy who, until late last year, was the most accurate kicker in the history of pro football, 
Really? And you cut him to save a couple of million dollars? Are you questioning Jerry Jones, Stephen I am. Jones, and Will McClay? I am. I, I, not Will McClay, because that wasn't his move. Brett Maher? Who the hell is Brett Maher? <laughs> well, no, no, seriously. That's what a new he... trend in the oh, National yeah. Football League. They're keeping no. rookie kickers. Yeah. It's, well, he's and not it's a for the cap reason. It's, it's for, yeah, the cap he's reason. He's a 20 year old, 28 year old refugee from Canadian football who bounced <laughs> around the NFL, never kicked a single kick in the National Football League, and he trots onto the field and predictably went wide right. And it just rips the guts out of your football team. On the sideline, I'm sure they're thinking, damn, it could have been 10 to 3. Well, did you're, you're did in you, the game. Did you see the Cowboys playing? They were gutless up until that point anyway, so they didn't have any gut. Uh, you watched the play, Skip Bayless. You know, I watched the defense play, and I think you just called my defense gutless, and it didn't look like gutless to give, me. Give them credit you because know? it could have been a lot worse because they did force a fumble inside mm -hmm. the five-yard line on, on C-Mac, Christian mm -hmm. McCaffrey. So give them credit. The, I thought the defense played well. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, oh, oh, uh, Sean Lee, he put him in the clinic on how to miss tackles yesterday. Oh, did he? You see it, Rod? He's looking, <laughs> he looking at the backfield. You got Cam. Stop did, did worrying about the running back. Did you see the plays he made in the pass game? Did you see him getting his hands on balls? Oh, he got one tip. But I saw the, I saw a wide receiver, 180 pounds, run over him. Mm -hmm. I saw Christian McCaffrey. He, he'd already been game. blocked sideways. Are you kidding me? No, he had no skip. Oh, Don't please. do that. Don't do that. And then how about my coach, Coach Clapper? <laughs> it's, it's fourth and ten Clapper. with two, 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 two minutes and 18 seconds left. Jason Garrett, arch conservative Jason Garrett, fourth and 10 from the Panthers' 48 yard line. You got 218 left in your defense the whole second half. Cam is going nowhere fast. He's having a hard time. I agree. So you punt it. You try to pin him. You got one of the better coffin corner sort right. of kickers in the league. And, and just punt him back to the 5 or the 10 or the yeah. 15 somewhere and let your defense hold on and make them punt it back to you. And maybe you'll get the ball first and 10 at the 50. Right. I don't know, right? Even That's you, how you play football. That's smart football. Even if you so, get it at your 40, Skip, okay. you got yeah. new time. You got, now you got new set of downs. So for once, Jason Garrett gambles, but it's a dumb gamble. <laughs> like, well, I, I can't even justify it. Way to go, Je No, not way to go because – You've done nothing throwing the football, especially on fourth and long or third and long. What are you, two for 11 on third down at that yep. point? And, and you just drop him straight back, and guess what happened? Kwan Short is right in his face as he starts to release to Deontay Thompson, who looked to be open on the sideline for a split second, and got a hand up, and the ball sails, and the game's basically over at that point. Way to go, Jason. Way oh, go. The, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Mm. Hold a timeout. Mm. Your quarterback. You told me you got a top 10 quarterback. Mm -hmm. A top 10 quarterback got to deliver us from evil. Yeah, but what, what quarterback with no protection can be any good at all? What did you tell me happened to Tom Brady at Denver in the NFC yeah. Championship game, right? But that's not. But Tom Brady had that running game. Give Tom Brady a running game, and he'll run you out. He gonna beat the brakes off. Okay, but Dallas didn't have a running game yesterday. Either. No, they, they had one. It. They chose not to okay. use it. Well, that's a difference. Okay, the and, great quarterbacks can make a difference. They're gonna make the receivers look better. Now, they're on the road, so if they go on the road, they go to Carolina, it's tough to win on the road. So when you go on the road, you want to split, you want to win your home game, so they've still got time. But at the end of the day, it's going to come down to Prescott. It really is. I mean, mm -hmm. it's going to, the defense is going to play good football. They're going to play solid football. But it's going to come down, can he make plays with his legs and with his arms okay. on a consistent basis so they can win over 10 games? Yes, he can. No. And yes, he will <laughs> next Sunday night on national TV from Jerry World. How are they going to get up against Jack Rabbit? You saw what he did to Dez last Good. year. Well, Locked the, him up. The problem with, the, with covering these guys is you don't know who to double because you can't really – nobody we'll need needs double, to be we'll doubled, right? We'll we'll double. You're like, well, what? maybe Jackrabbit's looking around like, I don't even know what to do anymore, right? I don't have anybody to lock up, right? If, uh, get old, uh, uh, oh, what about your guy Michael Gallup? Well, oh, he be galloping. Oh, uh -huh. Michael Gallup. <laughs> well, you know who was inactive yesterday, and it was a big mistake. Rico Gathers, oh, inactive, yeah. and I have no idea you know why. It, I know why. <laughs> why. Because Jason Garrett says Rico Gathers is not one of our best fit 46. Oh. That's why he was inactive. Hmm. You don't think he could have caught a couple of big balls on third down? No. Huh? First of all, he, does he play special teams? Because normally no. when you start getting down to that bottom, that last no. six, we need guys that can do multiple things, not just play offense or just defense. Yeah. Can you play the special Maybe teams? Maybe you need a playmaker. That's what he is. Playmaker retired. Well, they ain't got no play. Skip. Six feet, six inches. That's what he is. Huh? Do you I watch. Thought, I thought Mike Irvin was a playmaker. He mm -hmm. is. I and you make it skip. He has yet to catch a pass in the regular season. They were made to look a lot worse than they are on offense. 
They will have a coming out party on Sunday night against the Giants. They will beat the Giants. I'm already on record. They will beat the New York football Giants and be off to the races at one and one. Here they go. A snack thing will let y'all run the ball. I told you Friday. What did I tell you about this game at Carolina? Wrong place, wrong time. No, right place, right time. Mm -hmm. For you. Uh, L. Yeah. Snacks Harrison is not going to let you guys run the ball. Hmm. Tomlin, we'll Dalvin Tomlin we'll, we'll, we'll is not going to let you. Okay. No, we'll yeah. no, not yeah. happening. And Jack Rabbit got everybody locked mm -hmm. up. Yeah. What, what's he going to take? Two guys at once? Maybe? No, you don't need to <laughs> skip them guys right there. Rod, get out there right now and get yeah. and lock one of them yeah. down. Mm. Okay. Uh, Keep talking. I'm going to let you gonna talk all this. week. I this like is your this. week to talk, but you better get it all out because no, no. you're not going to get to do it anymore starting next Monday. Next Monday, that seat's going to get awfully no. hot and uncomfortable. You remember how Dak, yeah. Dak's rookie year? Mm -hmm. You came and gloated like 10 mm -hmm. straight weeks. You were just having your good old time. Yeah, and and you just high by my cowboy. Somebody just kept losing due week after week if after you know week until you had to bring a whole car to do into me for my birthday. You know what it is? It was unbelievable. Think about this. If you notice, I didn't bring any props. Hmm. I didn't bring no black and mild. You know why? I didn't bring no doubt. You know why? Because I expected them to do this. You were afraid. I expected them to You're do exactly to what they did. You're afraid to too soon. No. Because you know you might have to eat that black and mild. It'll be it'll be out it'll be out next week. Yeah. Next Monday, yeah. yeah. Okay, here we go. It's gonna be a long week for all of us. I'm a little worried about this, Rod. Thank you <laughs> for being here. <laughs> Appreciate it. Is it already time for the Browns to start Baker Mayfield? We'll discuss that with Michael Vick next. No mercy. So the Browns still haven't won a game since 2016, but they came really close yesterday. The Steelers blew a 14-point fourth-quarter lead, and the Browns actually tied it with under a minute left on a Tyrod Taylor to Josh Gordon touchdown. The game then went to overtime, and the Browns had a chance to win, but had a field goal blocked. Overall, Tyrod struggled going just 15 for 40 and getting sacked seven times. We're joined by Fox NFL analyst Michael Vick. Michael, I'm mm. glad you're with us today. Mm. Uh, I want to start with you. How quickly do the Browns need to go to Baker, Mayf Baker Mayfield? Well, it's going to be really soon if Tyrod have another day like this. <laughs> and, and that's my boy. Me and Tyrod spend a lot of time that's together, training him yeah. coming out. But yeah. listen, yeah. I have to call, call it how I see it. Right. And, uh, you know, you give him the benefit of the doubt. You give him one more game, go down to New Orleans next week. They play on the road. It won't be inclement weather like yesterday. Yep. You know, you won't be went, playing a team with that's wearing their emotions on their sleeve. It was an emotional day yesterday for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But the performance has to get better. I think they had three opportunities to score overtime yesterday. And regardless if, you know, it was raining or, you know, if it was snowing, you got to find a way to get it done in those conditions. You know, for that football team, for that franchise and what they've been through, what they need to get accomplished, something has to happen. So, you know, Baker Mayfield showed us a lot in preseason. Uh, he's, a, he's an exceptional talent. But at the end of the day, you don't want to put him out there in a, in a game like yesterday against a team like the Pittsburgh Steelers and things not go as well and, and he get ruined, you know. So I think he has the talent, but the good part about this is that he has a chance to just, you know, get himself together, still continue to learn, still learn from Tyrod, and, and ultimately he'll be the guy stepping in if, uh, you know, Tyrod continue to have days, you know, going 15 for 40 you know, for 100 and some odd yards. Yeah. It's just not mm -hmm. enough not production. Enough. I don't care what, what the weather indicates. Uh, I said it. I said he gave, I gave him one or two. And New Orleans is not going to help the situation because they ticked off because they lost their home opener. Yeah. You don't want to go 0-2 down in losing those two games at home. True. Yeah. So you're going to get a team that's going to come out fast and they're going to be upset and they're going to try to hang 48 on you yeah. like Tampa hung 48 on them. Skip, the thing is, is that when you look at this and, and the words of Sam Cooke, a change is going to come. Mm. And I, I said this at earlier. Point, absolutely. I, I believe it's sooner than later because their bye week is way, way on down there in November. Tyrod played like he played yesterday because that's a game you got to win. You get six turnovers, you only turn it over one, so you're plus five in the turnover ba battle. At and you, home? At home, home, and you tie the game? That's unacceptable. Yeah. You can't go 15 for 40. You got to find a way to make one play. And that's the difference between a lot of quarterbacks. Whether it's in the pass game or run game. You got to find that one play to be made, and you got to put your teammates, put your team in a position to win that game. And Tyrod didn't do that yesterday. I'm not going to put it all on him. Uh, I believe uh, uh, Todd Haley could have called a better ball game. I do too. I agree. That's neither here nor there. At yep. the end of the day, it gets placed at the feet of the quarterback. He gets all the credit when things go well. He must take the lion's share of the blame when things go bad. Mm -hmm. And you say, well, they tied the game. No. This is almost this is a loss mm -hmm. because you got yeah, five, you're plus five in a turnover battle and you're at home. Mm -hmm. This is a loss. You're one in 31 in your last two years. 
You've got to win this game, Tyrod. Yeah. I believe he's a week to two weeks away top, Skip Bayless, because if he doesn't play good, I put it like this here. If he doesn't play good next week, when they come back home and play the Jets, Baker Mayfield, no, no, they played it. Yeah, they played the Jets. Yeah. It's over. Week three. Over. Yep, they played the Jets, yep. <sighs> Thursday night, uh, I don't know, Skip, that's a Thursday night game. You think he'd be ready Thursday early. night? Mm. So they might have to, so it might be September 30th on the road against Oakland. On the, on the road? <sighs> yeah, but you don't want to, that's a Thursday night. That's a fast turnaround from Sunday. True. To Michael Vick's first point. I say this and you, you scoff at me. You think I'm just saying this for effect, but I'm not. Tyrod Taylor is a good man. You know it yeah. and I know it. Frank Beamer called him. I think he said he was the greatest leader I've ever been around, and I have no doubt about his leadership capabilities. Mm -hmm. That team respects him. Do they love him? Do they light up for him? I don't know if it goes that far because he's not an electric kind of leader. He's just a cool customer. He, he, is, he is so poised. Yeah. He's such a pro's pro. He's going to do the right thing at the right time, but I think he's limited in his arm strength. He doesn't have this can. This guy had a cannon. Right. And by the way, what happened when you were a rookie? Did you get ruined when you were a rookie? He didn't start. No. Chris Chandler huh? started. Yeah, Chris Chandler but, started, and I played. Play? I played in, in two games early, uh -huh. but the more I set, the better. Okay, I but got. it didn't ruin you to it play in those two no. games. No. And you went up. Was it your second year to Lambeau? And and it was pretty miserable night, wasn't yeah. it? Wasn't it pretty? Yeah, cold? inclement weather. It was inclement, yes. and you just figured out how to get it out of town with a W, didn't yeah. you? Okay, the Baker Mayfield I know would have won that game yesterday. And, and I'm not second guessing, I first guessed. I thought he should have started from the start. But you already had Tyrod because it was out of sequence. You'd already gotten Tyrod before you picked Baker first overall. Correct. I don't think Baker can be ruined by this. I could be wrong, but, but he's, he's got a mental toughness to him because he's got such a big chip on his shoulder because he was a walk-on twice, Jenny knows him. Yeah. He, he's he has he's built to some, of some tough stuff. Mm -hmm. I just don't think it would ruin him. Would he struggle? Would he have thrown two interceptions yesterday? He probably would have. Yeah. Would he have made two more plays than Tyrod? I believe he would have. Because, look, Tyrod is obviously much faster down the field. And Tyrod had a good game running the football. He had eight carries for 77 yards and led them in rushing. But Baker's slipperier in the pocket. Baker like he, he's, he's got escapability in the pocket. And Tyrod went down seven times yesterday. That's too many. You can't go five of 18 on third down. That's 28%. You can't go 15 of 40 because that's 38%. So a lot of plays got left out on a field in which Ben and company gave it to you six times. Well, you just have to close the deal. I just believe Baker's more of a spark plug, and he would have made a couple plays that would have closed the deal, and all of a sudden the Cleveland Browns would be off to the races. Now, that would be at Tyrod's expense, and I don't want to see a man lose his job. I just want to see the Cleveland Browns be the surprise team. Yeah, this pro you know? sports. It's, it's pro sports, sports at all. <laughs> and, and I will say this. I'm, I'm somewhat biased because, listen, me and Tyrod has a relationship, yep. and, and I, obviously I want to see him succeed. Right. But at the end of the day, the game is about production. Yep. And we always talked about that. So Baker Mayfield showed us enough in preseason where he can be a spark for, mm -hmm. you know, the Cleveland Browns. Yep. And it's what they need right now. And I don't know how much longer they can hold off. I don't know how much longer I want to see them hold, mm -hmm. keep him out. Yeah. You know, I think he deserves the opportunity to show why he's the number one yeah. pick. So to me, for the Browns, we, we talk about moral victories. That was a moral loss to me. Oh, yeah, yes. 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 Without a doubt. Yeah. It's a loss. It, it, goes, it goes in the record book as a tie, but yeah. that's a loss. You're yeah. at home, yeah. and that's the division. That, Steelers are one of the teams that's favored to represent the AFC in the Super Bowl. Yeah. And you had them in your building, and you were plus five in the turnover battle, and you tied that ball game. You have to find a way to win. Man, can you imagine the electricity in that locker room? I know it's game one. Can you imagine the, uh, the electricity in that stadium as the fans are leaving? I know it's game one. But, Skip, they, you got to give them something. Crazy. Yeah. Tyrod definitely gave him something to talk about. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he's making it real easy. Yeah. Because you could have won that game, and nobody's talking about Baker Mayfield starting, Skip. You win this game, no matter how sure. bad. If you win this game, that's on ice for another week. I know. Because you tied the game. Yeah. You tied it. You didn't lose it. You tied it. You're like, man, Baker might have won that thing. I know. He wasn't the fourth pick in the draft. He was the first pick. First yes. Pick. He is the reigning Heisman Trophy winner. Mm -hmm. Last year, he threw 43 touchdown passes to six interceptions. I don't know. You want him to start this week in New Orleans? Be tough. 
It, it's probably when, wrong place, wrong time yeah, for any podcast. Yeah. I'm, I'm, not sure I want, I'm not sure I want Tom Brady to start this week. Somebody get the, somebody get the buzz yeah. off. Somebody get the catch of the buzz off. Absolutely, especially well, since New both of us picked him to represent the NFC in the Super yeah. Bowl. Uh, they better bounce back. They better not go 0-2 at yeah, home. Yeah, we need oh. to bounce back. Yeah. It's a tough hole Marcus to Lattimore, he needs to have a bounce back game. Ooh. Yeah, because that's uh, uh, Deshaun and, 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 and Vince. And Evans went yard on him. Mike Evans, and Vince. Mike yeah. Evans, they went crazy yesterday. Okay, they went crazy because they thought this bearded old guy is starting a quarterback, and we got this, right? And yeah. you go out and just think you can show up. Put on a show, and you got showed up at home, right? You know how Fitzpatrick is, Skip. Mm-hmm. There was no expectation. He was expected to lose in has New he Orleans. he not done this before? Yes. He has done this before. But now, all of a sudden, they're yeah. like, oh, man, Tampa, they look good. They might mm-hmm. be able to do something. Mm-hmm. Guess what happened? Remember with the Jets when he went 10-6, and six, and they, he got that big money to come back? <laughs> he just roller coastered. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Same thing with the Texans. Yep. Oh, ooh, Fitzpatrick going to hit him up. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Expectations. Mm-hmm. Kills a lot of careers, Skip Bayless. Yep. But Ryan's made a good sure. chunk of change. Oh, yeah, He's yeah, okay. fool of them. And, and, yeah. and if he keep playing like that, he'll continue to make <laughs> chunks of change. <laughs> Checks keep rolling in. Oh, Michael, thank you thank for you. being here. No mercy. Des Bryant was very busy yesterday, but uh, it was on Twitter instead of on a football field. Yes, he was busy tweeting during the Cowboys' loss, and someone pointed out that Dallas would have won the game if they had Des and the recently cut kicker Dan Bailey, and Des said, quote, real mm-hmm. Fact, someone then asked Des to come back to the Cowboys. Des responded, nah, I'm okay. I'd rather go somewhere. I can showcase my skills for real. If I line up next to Grant, Hogan, Edelman, I'm for sure getting a one-on-one matchup. Plus, I won't be getting criticized or controlled for expressing my love for the game. Hey, Washington, uh, it's cool as well. I like how he threw that one in. Shannon, would Des be a good fit in New England? No. That's not going to be a good fit in New England. <laughs> Skip, does, does Dez realize he got one-on-one coverage because they were trying to stop the run with Zeke? You got one-on-one. That's, what da- that's where Dax Reed was telling him to go to with the ball, to you with the single coverage. Yep. Everybody got single coverage because they got the eighth guy in the box. Mm-hmm. But because you're Dez Bryant, you're mm-hmm. the Pro Bowl player. You're the former All-Pro. Mm-hmm. You, oh, I got to go to Dez. Mm-hmm. No, he would not be a good fit in New England, Skip, because if you look at New England, those guys play multiple positions. And everybody talks about, even Tom Brady, talks about how hard it is to play in this offense. Mm-hmm. Tom Brady's been in this offense virtually, Skip, his entire career. He says it's hard. Mm-hmm. Everybody, you hear Amendola talk about it, you hear Edelman talk about it, you hear Gronk talk about it, every receiver talk about it. Man, mm-hmm. you studying every single night. Mm-hmm. Dez is going to be an injury signing on a very bad team. If Dez thinks he's going to be able to go there and all of a sudden he didn't get a pass or things didn't go he, his way, that he can voice his frustration where he says either showing his passion, only one guy gets to show passion on New England mm-hmm. sideline. That's number 12. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen anybody else throw their helmet? No. Nope. Have you ever seen anybody yell and scream at coaches on the sidelines? Get nope. I've seen one guy in all the years that he's been in New England, and that's Tom Brady. I haven't seen him throw his helmet. No, I'm you? saying, but, you know, yet, you know, get in the face no, of, I, of a, no, a coach. No. Nope. So if Dad say, oh, I can show my passion and not get – nah, bro. Dad, you know what, Skip? He comes across as – he's like he's almost rooting for the Cowboys to lose – so I can say, nah, 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 I told you. You can't blame me now. Nah, I ain't yeah. there. <laughs> Stop it, Dez. Mm. For real? <sighs> For me, this was LOL when I saw these <laughs> tweets because there is no way Bill Belichick wants Des Bryant, and there's even less way that Tom Brady wants Des Bryant. And by the way, yesterday he threw – Gronk seven. He Gronk caught seven, and Phil Dorsett looked pretty good yesterday. Mm-hmm. He caught seven balls, and you know what? Cordero Patterson is a stud to me, who's never been utilized as a wideout. Mm-hmm. Watch as the year goes on, he gets more and more comfortable with Brady, and vice versa. He's going to start catching balls, and guess what? He's six two two twenty eight. That's even bigger than Des mm-hmm. is and was, right? Yeah. Yes. So all of a sudden, you got that. And by the way, James White caught four balls, and and Devlin, the fullback, caught. Four balls yesterday. Mm-hmm. Who throws the fullback four passes? Yeah. Tom Brady. That's <laughs> right. how they do it, yes. right? So there's no Edelman, no problem. So when I look at Dez, you know, the, the funny thing about it to me was at one point he tweets, I'm done talking about the Cowboys, blah, 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 <laughs> yeah. blah. And then he just can't help himself. And there's an emoji, sarcastic emoji, like he's laughing at the Cowboys. And then he 
response to some fan who says the Cowboys would have won Sunday with Dez and Dan Bailey, and, and to, you read it, you know, real fact, and he just can't yeah. stop it, and it goes on and on and on, and he's tweeting about, what? now I even know which routes they're going to run off the hand si- Dax hand signals. He you just, should! You were just there! He left his heart in Dallas. He just, and you know what's funny about all this? Des Bryant is having more impact from his couch than he had on the football field, yeah. right? <laughs> but, Am I right? If you yeah. don't he, sh- he should become a professional tweeter yes. because it's great. It's it's a great theater. To well, me. well, well right? maybe maybe uh, Des can help me understand this. Why didn't they win more games when you were there last year? Help me out. You were just <laughs> there. Why didn't you win more games then? Yeah. Do you realize that when you have a dominant running back, and I play with one, I play with TD. You get one-on-one coverage because they're dropping that safety down to try and take away the run. So you got to beat one-on-one coverage. And Mike Shanahan would tell us every day, especially we play the Raiders, we play Kansas City, who are heavy man-to-man mm-hmm. team. He yep. said, guys, if you can't beat man-to-man coverage, you either coaching or selling cars. Yep. Well, John Elway says he's not hiring and mm-hmm. my coaching staff is filled. Yep. So either you beat man coverage or you get out of the league. Okay. Where is Dan Bryant right now, Skip? Couch. Will McClay said... Mm-hmm. The tape said Dez couldn't consistently beat one-on-one coverage. Yep. Everybody, well, you don't like Dez. You got something against Dez. No, I just believe what my eyes tell me. I see better than I hear. I know what Dez telling me. Mm-hmm. I know what people in Dez's corner saying, but that ain't what I see. Mm. So he did mention the Redskins, and that's a more realistic yes. landing spot for him. Okay. But who had the second biggest surprising first game yesterday? The Redskins right. did, right? Mm-hmm. Not, not exactly Ryan Fitzpatrick, but to go to Arizona, I know it's Sam Bradford, and to win convincingly, Adrian Peterson had a great start. When did somebody go to rest Sam Bradford for stealing? Well, I don't know. That dude, been, ste- that dude, been, st- that dude been stealing since 2012. He won about the- 50 million guaranteed yes. as the first overall pick. He's been stealing a long time, Skip. Okay. I, I said I before that draft, I saw every snap he played at the University of Oklahoma. I said, there's no way I'm taking him number one. <laughs> and he's still starting. Four teams. Yeah. He done stole from the Rams. Yeah. <laughs> they tried to get him out of Philadelphia. Still, Philly got the men. You know, there's a men in Philadelphia. They got a lot of money. They said, nah, you're not finna rob us. They get him up. They trade him to uh, uh, Minnesota. Yes. Minnesota, he steal from them. And now yeah. he goes to Arizona and steals some more money. You know why? Because he's such a good guy. That No, he does. The coaches that's, love him. That's yeah. the only coach's dream. The quarterback position. Yeah is the only position in the NFL that you get paid on potential. Mm-hmm. Every other position will make you prove it mm-hmm. before they compensate yep. Only Oh, Sam Bradford, you watch him how he throw the ball? Yeah, but he'll fold like a banquet chair at the end of the night. Mm. <laughs> well, Scary. I'll say it one more time. Alex Smith is better than Kirk Cousins. No, not. You, yes, saw first cousin, you saw First Cousins dealing? No. You saw him dealing on Sunday? It's Skip San Bailey. Francisco? Whoa, really? whoa, now in San Francisco. Huh. Everybody was hyped. That was yeah, a hot team. We By the way, on. did you see what the Vikings said about Jimmy G? He looked scared. He looked scared. The thing was, Skip, hey, we didn't, we didn't know what Jimmy G's ceiling was. Mm-hmm. I mean, floor was mm-hmm. because he hadn't lost. Mm-hmm. So we, everybody, oh, look at Jimmy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, I it, think uh, Robert Kraft made the right decision to stick with Tom Brady. No, no, no. Coach Belichick brings the best out of everybody. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Jenny Taft. Join us again at the same time tomorrow morning, 930 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports. One of one. one.